May we see your invitation? Odd groups got left, even groups got right. Master, I hope I served you well. More dots, more dots. Too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Jasper, and today we're taking a look at our fourth episode in our What About TBC series as we take a look at The Seal of Blood. Real quick before we begin, a little bit of shameless self-promotion, but if you enjoy the content, uh, please feel free to leave a like. If you have a question, a concern, or maybe you forgot something, please feel free to comment down below. And most importantly, subscribe if you enjoy the content from the channel. It helps me out a lot. I have started streaming on Twitch and I have like no followers, so it'd be lovely to kind of get a community started over there on that side of things. But with all that out of the way, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video and let's take a look at the Seal of Blood. Alright, so upon activation of the Seal, you get a buff in which your melee attacks will do holy damage to the target at the cost of health. But let's take a look at how that health is calculated. So upon looking at the Seal, I'll put it on the screen now for you. Um, it's equal to 35% of your normal weapon damage. However, you as a paladin are gonna lose health equal to 10% of the total damage afflicted onto the target. In addition to that, unleashing your seal, of course, will cause extra holy damage. However, the cost um, that's, that you're gonna be taxed on in terms of losing health is equal to 33% of the damage caused by the seal. This kind of sounds counterintuitive, but when you take into account spiritual attunement, which is something that all paladins are going to be receiving in the Burning Crusade, it actually, makes this seal phenomenal um, because if you're not familiar with spiritual attunement basically when um, you're healed you get a portion of the amount healed um, as mana so it's gonna it's gonna be kind of like putting a dot on yourself but most likely you'll be being healed by like healers and stuff like that so it actually is going to allow you to just kind of keep generating and pushing dps um, which is going to be phenomenal for us uh, just because you know we're gonna have a lot to kind of go up against with all these people in t3 um, but honestly i would say in terms of balancing it out between tanking and dpsing i personally would probably only use this seal as a dps seal um the reason for that is just because i personally don't want to create more tension or stress on the healers especially um in the early phases of tbc when our gear is not going to be the best to say the least um i think maybe in later phases it might have some use but honestly i feel like between all of our other spells and other utilities that we have in tbc it's not going to be super crucial or super necessary to tank with seal of blood however i feel as a dps it's going to be phenomenal like you're going to it might actually even put you up you know competitively with some of the other classes uh, that's just my personal take on it um, i hope you guys enjoyed this video it's a little bit shorter i just wanted to kind of introduce the seal to you i will probably be putting out the next video probably tomorrow we're going to be covering the seal of vengeance which is the other seal that used to be unique only to the alliance but of course now the horde get a hold of it and i'm happy for that i love to see the like the faction balances and stuff happening um but i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh feel free to like the video subscribe if you want to see more and uh if you have a question or you have a recommendation for a video, just leave it down in the comment section below. But until next time, you guys, I'll see you soon. Peace.